most people uh, are aware that the that the Chinook uses uh, Teleflex cables to operate the the aileron controls in it, and uh, these red things that you see in front of you here, those those are the original ones that come with the kit. They're made by Morse. It says Morse on the on the cable housing, and I switched those because I didn't like the feel of them. They they always had a little bit of play in them. The cable housing is pretty pretty loose to the cable that's inside and therefore you get a little bit of play in there and you can feel it in a control stick and uh, I've switched them with these here which are Teleflex uh, Marine is called it's uh, I think it's their own company I think I see them on the stock market Teleflex but anyways uh, it, this just has a black housing but they're lined with Teflon inside and the Teflon lined ones uh, really work well and just about eliminate that big play you have in the control stick. So I really think replacing those was a, a good move. It, it doesn't hurt anything for flying, but it makes the feel of the plane, I think, much nicer with these. Well, I have a problem because I can't find one of the clamps that I need to clamp the, the uh, Teleflex cable onto the Chinook. So I go on eBay and you can buy these Teleflex cable clamps, uh, but they're pretty pricey. You know, here's one for fourteen thirty-eight, and another one here for about seven bucks, which doesn't sound too bad. If all I need is one of them, I'd probably think about buying that. But it would be the time it takes to get it, and I think I probably can make those things faster. I, I'm going to need. I mean, one of them would get me out of my problem for the Chinook, but there's two other old cables that came off it, which would be perfectly good cables if you had to clamp. Uh, of course, you could think of other ways to clamp the end of the cable. You wouldn't necessarily have to have these, but I decided if I'm going to make one, I'll just go ahead and make five of them. And that would allow me to camp, clamp the cable I have and uh, uh, both ends of the old cables in case I wanted to use those for something. But... Uh, I'm just doing this mostly to show you how I go about thinking about solving a problem and this isn't that great a problem I mean these things it only costs them 25 cents to make these things they're, they're worth 25 cents a piece uh, anybody's charging more than that for them is ripping you off but uh, it's it's a special clamp and the die that makes it stamps it out bing 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 real fast and uh, I think I can make something that will work just as good or better than this sheet metal thing here. So uh, that's how I'm going to go about trying to solve this problem. I went out and looked for uh, through my junk to find some pieces of aluminum I thought I could make this bracket out of. Uh, these are a little too short, don't have enough to make that many out of it, and I don't think it's big enough anyway. Uh, I found this piece out of there. This be some real good stuff here. This is a piece of the jig and fixture plate. Uh, Mark the center lines for where I figure the clamp's got to go and uh, where I have to cut off uh, portions of the thing. To, they'll be inch and a half long each one and I'll put the holes in that hold it down. I'll do that as the last step probably. Uh, next thing I did is I looked at this I've measured this, uh, the low spot in there is a quarter inch, so that's a quarter inch, and this right here where it clamps on it's three eighths, so that tells me what sizes I got to make on there. So now I'm ready to make some clamps. First step in any kind of machine work is to blew up your part and put your scribe lines where hole locations and where my saw cuts are going to be uh, that gets me started and you can tell real easy with it blued up like that if you're starting to make a mistake uh, prick punch marks here at the cross the, this line here is uh, 3 16 in from this edge because the diameter I want to clamp is 3 8 so half of 3 8 is 3 16 and all I have to do is drill my holes here I'll probably put the quarter inch hole first and then 
and then go in with the 3 8 end mill to make those. Now I have my my uh, holes in there now. This is the smallest diameter where the key is in there. This is this is going to be the key part. Now I have to go in and mill a slot with a 3 8 end mill on this side and on this side uh, for the part that's going to clamp at the 3 8 part that's going to clamp down. And that should do it. Then it'll be just two holes here. I'll be putting in one inch apart. Now I'm ready to put the holes, put the holes in these uh, parts right here. Got to make sure that backlash is going the right way. I don't need to go all the way through with them. I'll do that later. I'll get my one inch and crank it off on here. So I got my glasses. It's going the right way when I do the next one, but the way these are supposed to work, I I took and uh, put it in my blast cabinet. That's easier than going over it with a file, especially when you got five of the things, uh, you know, just to, to get the burrs off and stuff. But uh, my little key in there is supposed to hold it, and the way this will work is this is going to fit on there like so, and the key keeps it from moving back and forth in there, and this will will bolt it down uh, so the cable housing won't move, and I need one for each end, and of course for these red cables I need I need one for each end of them there, so. Now I got red cables I can use too if I want to, but but believe me the uh, the Teleflex cable with the Teflon lining is really the way to go. It's it's a world of difference in the way the aircraft feels if you use those kind of cables. There's what my cable end clamp looks like, and this is the sheet metal version right here. That's coming from the front stick and this one's the rear control stick and you can see how they hook up and push on that bell crank to work the ailerons what I do to get the cover over on that on that velcro is I put a piece of paper across that like that and that allows me to kind of slowly work my way up without the velcro sticking on me and when I get the thing positioned the way I want it I pull out this piece of paper this is the rear seat cable clamp and this is the control stick in the rear seat and it, it works nice and smooth but as you can see it's a fairly short thing maybe eh, probably a foot long maybe less than a foot uh, you don't really have much mechanical advantage over the one in the front the front ones probably uh, another foot longer than this one uh, the way the throttle works uh, right here this is part of the throttle arrangement the throttle works a push rod that's underneath the seat this goes this tube here it's just a hollow piece of aluminum but it runs through uh, ball bearings I put ball bearings everywhere on this mostly because I had them not because it required them but but that's my throttle and then it works this push rod here 
and the push rod goes back to this mechanism here which I hope you can see yes you can and the friction device is back here which is a piece of phenolic and it's adjustable it, there's a spring tensioner thing on there that tensions the uh, phenolic so that it's nice smooth action and the thing will stay where you put it again the rear seat cannot overpower the front seat because this lever here is oh I'm gonna say you've got maybe about a six inch lever on there compared to better than a foot on the front and it's working through this push-pull thing which is just a hollow tube and pulling I think there's no problem but if you was to push on it, it it could bend if you pushed hard enough I suppose so the main the main throttle control and the brakes and everything's in the front and the the throttle was a big long lever which you can see how long it is from here pretty well and that all works with mechanical linkage to the throttle in the back so the thing that's really controlling this thing is this rear seat throttle thing here